I'm Faith Middleton, prepared to be dazzled. Come with me to explore the longest coastline in the Italian peninsula. I'm leading a food and wine trip to one of the least known and most beautiful regions of Italy, Puglia, bordered by two seas, aqua waters, ancient architecture, amazing food and wine, the town of Lecce, known as the Florence of the North. We'll experience it all and also spend a few days exploring and eating in Rome, too. Top flight hotels. And trust me, they want to knock us out because they know I'm reporting on the experience. If you'd like to attend, I would write me quickly. And that is fmiddleton at ctpublic.org. Hope to see you there. Faith here with your welcome toast. If food were free, why work? I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. It's great to have you joining the party on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze, inviting you to eat, drink, and be merry with us. We're in our culinary studios at the Big G Gateway Community College in New Haven. Five kitchens. On the show, what a thing we have. We're going to start out with a quick interview about a Spanish festival that's going to happen in New London. It's one of the most interesting things I have ever seen happen in Connecticut. So you want to have a a pen ready or make mental note of this. We're going to talk about a book that has just come out so utterly fascinating because it involves a substance that we all know. You can use it in cooking, in cleaning after cooking. In so many ways, it'll blow your mind. It is the most inexpensive product, and the whole book is devoted to it. I can't wait to tell you about that. Alex Provence, who is both now our Southwestern correspondent and spends half his time here in our studios, is in the studio this time, and he has brought a wine This is a box wine, and it is from France, the Rhone region, and it is gangbusters. Four bottles in a single box, and you cannot believe the price and how delicious it is. So... Robin Doyen Aiken is here, our senior producer. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, Hey, here we go. want to begin with this. Something extraordinary is about to happen in New London, Connecticut on June 23rd. This is something you must go to, the Basque Festival. Food and wine people from Spain are coming. Those of us who want to taste delicious and real Spanish food and wine are going to be there. You can experience Spanish music and dance and crafts And we're going to watch a giant paella being made and served to us. This is going to be something right on the plaza in front of the New London train station, right near the water, plenty of close parking. You can come by train, ferry, or car, but come. I am going. I promise you that. This is one of the most exciting things to me. I am nuts about Spanish food and wine. We are going to talk with one of the people who is involved with organizing this and also is from both Spain and America, and he is an extraordinary man, and his name is Ander Caballero, and he's on the phone with me. Welcome to the Food Schmooze. Hello. Thank you very much. As you can tell, I'm very excited about this thing, and I know Alex is too. So why do you do these Basque 
festivals. Why are the Basque people so particularly interested of the Spanish people to be known and recognized? There is a large tradition of uh, Basques in America, actually the very founding fathers themselves who were in very close relation to the Basque country and hmm. um, and also through history. Uh, and even before that, there are some uh, data that show us that Basque fishermen and whalers were actually in the area uh, fishing for cod and, and whales. So they, 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 wow. I mean, history is there. History shows us that we've been around for quite a long time. But then in, in more modern times, and very much in particular in the area of Hartford and Milford and Connecticut in general, but also in, uh, in Florida and other states, uh, we have had a very uh, large presence of, of Basques and Basque Americans playing high ally at the uh, different frontons yes. uh, that we used to have. Yes, yeah. that's right. I didn't think of that. And you know, just by coincidence, these high lie facilities were or are near seaports and so it is it's a beautiful marriage yeah. isn't it it is indeed yes let's picture that we are all going i'm going to tell you where to go to get ticket information of course but let's pretend that we are at the festival in the plaza in front of the train station right on the edge of the water in new london right downtown big parking garages nearby and people will be coming in by train by ferry because the ferry port is right there what are we going to see when we walk into the plaza Well, firstly, I can I can guarantee that we're going to have a beautiful sunny day in, in London. So, <laughs> so that's going to be for starters. Uh, but then, when the crowd starts getting in, we'll be uh, welcomed by marching bands, and the dignitaries of the city of New London uh, are going to be there with us, together with participants coming from uh, California, uh, from Montreal, and, and other areas, in the U.S., Florida, and so on. Actually, ourselves from uh, uh, the Boston area and the and the New York area. So there'll be uh, plenty of people. There, uh, we're going to have the, the Basque flag and the American flag uh, raised in the in the plaza, and then our dances, Basque dances, are going to dance a very traditional and and uh, and formal dance to the dignitaries. And then in the meantime, just a, a few minutes later, we'll have some Basque music. So Basque musicians are, are coming from the Basque country, and as a kickoff, I think we can uh, start try and tasting the uh, beautiful wines, chacoli is the, the very typical Basque wine, and the pinchos, those uh, miniature delicacies that uh, some of our chefs uh, are coming from New York, especially in Florida as well, will be uh, cooking for us. Spanish so chefs. That'll be just the beginning. Part of the music, will that be the gaita, the, the bagpipe? We are planning to bring the accordion players together with a, a couple of timbals that are very traditionally used in parties and festivals in the Basque Country. Oh, I can't wait for this. I was told by Charlotte Hennigan of... Thames Winery and Flowers in New London, the, one of the lead sponsors, that there are going to be crafts, these traditional Spanish crafts people who will be scattered around. What does, before I get to the food, what do these crafts people do? So basically what we're going we're to see is uh, people coming from, uh, people of Basque origin, I would say, coming from all places in, in the U.S., especially in California uh, and some of Nevada, actually, where, where the presence of Basque Americans is pretty large. So they're going to be performing uh, traditional dances that have been kept and, and very well maintained here in the U.S. by uh, local Basque Americans uh, and also the music that I've been keeping so so proudly for years and years. Mm. Uh, we will also be having some craftsmen coming with uh, with, uh, with different uh, traditional handcraft uh, products that will be displayed there. So we'll be having all sorts of uh, Basque expressions, let's say, in, in mm. London. On June 23rd, I'm told that around 
oh, maybe 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the big, big paella, traditional, oh. real paella, Alex. Yeah. Uh, Alex makes an amazing paella from his Spanish oh, tradition. Good. So he's, I understand you're going to make this huge paella, or many of them, and this is going to be That's served great. starting at 3 o'clock, Yes. That is right. That is mm. right. And the, and the paella not only is going to be uh, cooked for all the uh, attendants and all the participants, but also I think it's, it's fair to mention that the paella is going to be uh, made by uh, about standing chef, either coming from, from the New York area and the restaurants such as uh, Miquel de Luis and Eder Montero at Chiquito, mm-hmm. but also uh, two more great chefs coming from, uh, from Florida. Uh, Bonnie went with a paella party in Miami, and then uh, also Luis Elu at Paella Grill in West Palm Beach. So uh, it is, uh-huh. there's, there's going to be all sorts of uh, Basque expressions coming with flavors of, of, of the U.S., and we're definitely going to enjoy not only the paella, which is a traditional dish, back in the past country that has been adopted from uh, from the cultures around, but also the pinchos, as I was uh, referring to before, the miniatures, uh, the miniature cuisine that made the past country so famous. Little bites. In, in, in times, little, little bites, indeed. And we're going to have a selection of uh, up to uh, seven different pinchos that together with the wines and, and chocolates will make the most wonderful uh, culinary time for us in, in London. Well, so pinchos, Alex, is what we would also call tapas? Similar. Little tiny small Little plates, appetizer little... that can be on skewers and just like little little appetizers. Okay. So there'll be a lot of those being served. Exciting to hear that these chefs are coming in from all over. We have uh, also in our region really wonderful Spanish restaurants. I think of Olea yeah. and in Hartford area, Alex. Costa del Sol. Costa del Sol, Pepe. yeah. So very exciting. Now the wines, the Spanish wines, which are a favorite of mine, it might be, I hate to say this, but it might be my favorite wine on the planet. It comes from Spain. You're going to have Spanish wine producers there, Yes. Yes, indeed. We're going to have uh, the producers from uh, from the Basque uh, area, both uh, uh, producing Chacoli, which is a very, yeah. very particular uh, crispy white and fresh wine uh, that we produce back there. We'll have also specialty in uh, Rosé, which is certainly delicious. So Chocoli, you have to... Sp- Rioja, Alavesa wine. Chocoli, you have to spell that for us. That's a fun one. You're, yeah, we, we spell it T-X-A-K-O-L-I, T-X-A-K-O-L-I, With a T. K O L I, right? Chocoli. 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 And, okay. And will you have the, um, is it called the piporros to, to pour oh, no. the wine into your mouth? No, we, we, we don't traditionally no. drink it like that. Oh, we, no. We, I mean, the, the wine is enjoyed <laughs> in a proper glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just Oh, I think I've seen it drunk so that way before. I'm so sad about that. <laughs> okay. So, I honestly, I'm such a fan of Spanish food and wine. I am, this is something, an event in... Uh, Connecticut is one of the things I'm the most excited about in the past year, at least. So, um, again, we're going to give you an address to get tickets, and this, I promise you, this is going to sell out. So it's going to be on the plaza in New London, right in front of the train station. It is on Saturday, June 23rd, and it's the Basque Festival. And we have Ander Caballero as our guest, and, of course, he will be there. The New England Basque Society will be there. People coming from all over the country, some from Spain. This has never happened like this in Connecticut. We've had small events at people's family estates and things like this. Is, there's never, this is the start, I hope, of a series of public festivals celebrating the Basque culture and our sisterhood brotherhood with the Basque people. So if for ticket information... You can still uh, purchase those tickets. There are a few left, <laughs> just uh, around 200. Uh, they've been actually uh, selling quite quick. You can uh, get them at um, nebasque.org. And this is a translation of New England Basque. It's N E as in New England, Basque, B A S Q U E, N E Basque dot O R G. And it's technically Parade Plaza if you're coming by car and you want to put it in your search. Parade Plaza on Water Street in New London. Ander Caballero, I have a feeling this is the start of you being on our show many, many times. 
Thank oh, you. That would be my pleasure. It would be an honor. Thank you very much, Faith. I so look forward to meeting you in person. Likewise. When I say to you, let me just do a little tag on here, because when I say to you that this is going to be big and we are going with it, there are festivals like this by this society in Idaho that attract 30 40,000 people. That's where we're headed with this. This is the very first one. Be there. Okay. Thank you, Ander. Okay. Bye-bye. See you soon. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Coming up, an amazing wine discovery. Seriously, it's a boxed wine, and it is unbelievably delicious. You're going to see why in just a second. More mouth-watering conversation and fun ahead on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze. I hope you will make a charitable contribution to Feed the Hungry. We're online now at foodschmooze.org and we'll be right back. Faith Middleton, sign up for our free podcast. Podcast meaning a copy of the show. It's the way that so many people listen. And you just go to our website once, sign up with your information, and that's it. You don't do another thing. It just comes to you on whatever device you'd like. So that is at Food Schmooze, S-C-H like school, M-O-O like the cow, Z-E, foodschmooze.org. Okay. My treasured food buddies are here. Alex Province, our senior contributor, who uh, divides his time now between us in the studio in New Haven at Gateway Community College and also our sister studio in Phoenix, Arizona. And so he's teaching us about Southwestern cooking and drinking, and it's, it's a lot of fun. He's in our studio in New Haven this time, and Alex is a wine broker and has brought us something. <laughs> I'm I'm ho- Alex, it's so great to uh. see you face to face. Okay, so I'm holding something um that is a box. It's it looks like a small cardboard box. Smaller than a bread box. <laughs> Smaller than a bread box. Um and it is a wine that you have brought to us in the past that I have raved about. It is a rose from the Cote de Rhone, mm-hmm. and this is the 2017. This has become a box wine. Can you explain this to us sure. before we taste this? So everyone thinks of box wines as being industrial and inexpensive, cheap wines that you wouldn't want to drink. But in Europe, it's part of alternative packaging where it's better for the environment. You're not shipping glass. It's completely recyclable. More affordable for more, the vineyard. Much cheaper to, to actually fill it than it is bottles. But how does it benefit the consumer of boxed wine? Well, that little besides, box you're holding cheaper. is okay. four bottles of wine. It, it seems impossible. I think it does. Is, are they cheating? I mean, <laughs> like how can four bo- right, breaking the laws of how physics? How do four bottles fit in this little <laughs> tiny box? Where they're squeezed that I can in, you hold know, with just a few fingers. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. But true enough, if you look at all the packaging, four bottles are in here. So this is remember 
uh, this is Domaine Leclo de Lumiere. So we've had this on the show before. It is a pale and gorgeous rosé, dry, that just seems to go with everything. You keep this in the refrigerator. It's got one of these little spouts spouts <laughs> that you just pop out of the box. Uh-huh. And we just <laughs> did this, and it was it's the most fun. So yeah. let me just pour a little of this into my – Alex, can you come around and hold me? Okay, you do that. You press the little plastic. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Wow. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we all have it. So just as a reminder, Domaine Le Clos de Lumière from the Côte d'Iron region. Where's the Côte d'Iron? So in the south of France, near the city of Avignon. So it's on the edge of Provence. Exactly. The very far south part of the mm-hmm. Rhone River, and then it's technically from a little town called Fournez. Uh-huh. So the name Domaine Le Clos de Lumière means? Clo is like a little clo of, of light, like a um, medieval abbey, and Lumière is, is brightness or light or something. So it would be the kind of almost the, the house of light through the window. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at, <laughs> at the box. <laughs> Come in. Meanwhile, meanwhile, it's a box. Yeah. So um, I am knocked out by this. The quality thing. Is, is. The quality yeah. is unreal. So here's my big question for you. First of all, what does this sell for a box? So there are four bottles in there. So you buy it by the box, and a box will be about thirty four, thirty five dollars for the you know to the consumer, and then. So it, let's say thirty five. Sure. And there are four bottles in there. So eight fifty a bottle. And the idea, so, you know, Matt and I were laughing. If you're a daily drinker who likes to have wholesome, well-made wine, like you come home from work, you want to open up a bottle, there's not a cheaper way of buying authentic French wine than this format. I mean, you'll never buy a bottle for eight fifty. This tiny cardboard box fits in your refrigerator shelf so sure. easily because it's so small. And you just it's take airtight. the little spout. It's airtight. And this is the thing. Yeah. How long can that sit on Forever. the shelf? Forever. So it'll last weeks and weeks and weeks, months, actually. Without going back. Because it's the air that makes wine spoil. It turns it into vinegar. And no air can get in. It, inside this cardboard, and it has as little ink as possible, so it's all recyclable. It's just raw cardboard. Inside is a little bladder, and that's airtight. So as you pour, and you'll get every last drop out, air doesn't come in. So it, Essentially, it's mm. it's its own little wine tank. So Alex knows that when this he brought this in in bottles into the studio in the past. You can search it on our website, foodschmooze.org. And when he brought this in, I was knocked out by the quality of this. My first question for him when I saw that they're doing this was, have they changed? anything in the production or in the quality of this wholesome wine to accommodate this sort of, you know, has it become industrial in any way? And I know you'll be honest with me. Yeah, so the Daniel family has, has still three generations. The cost of producing wine, you know, they have the cost of making the wine, but you also have bottling costs, and all of that adds up. So the cork has a cost. It's, you know, an expensive cork can almost be a mm-hmm. dollar. The bottle has an expensive cost, the shipping cost. So the if of the, the, the weight, I mean, so you're paying, you know, environmentally, to, when you think of an empty case of wine with just the bottles alone, it's a tremendous amount of weight, and you're paying for that, and that's sort of the environmental cost. So that's how they make up for the price differential. It's just they're putting four bottles of wine without spending four corks and the money on four bottles. And, wow. and uh, so it, it's a very, you know, a, a way of looking at it is, you know, like the little bottles of wine that you get on airplanes, mm-hmm. those can be almost as expensive as a full bottle of wine because the effort to fill it and to produce it is almost the same. So it's a tremendous amount of money spent on that. So the hard part is getting over as a consumer. People look at this and they think, oh, this should be an inexpensive, you know, bad wine. And there's a little, the consumer is going to have to, you know, It's like a screw cap. You kind of have to get over it. And you say the quality of wine is still an estate-produced, high-end quality wine. So uh, this is something I want to talk with senior producer Robin Doyen Aiken about because we were just at a restaurant trying this wine, and they were so gracious to let us do this. We wanted to try the food at Olives and Oil in New Haven, right downtown, and it is a 
fabulous restaurant. So good. Uh, really. And so we were having, uh, we brought this in. They brought us glasses to the table. And Robin, you said, well, of course, when Alex first said he was bringing a box of wine, it made me giggle a little bit. <laughs> but um, it's still incredibly delicious. Um, we had it with a bunch of different things. We had it with sardines. Octopus. We had it with scallops. Yes. Um, Alex had it with some pasta. Scallops and preserved Meatballs. Mm -hmm. you know, Meatballs. It, it just goes with so many things. And I dip into boxed wines frequently to see how they're doing in America versus Europe. In Europe, there are some real quality mm -hmm. wines. America's been a little bit behind. Every once in a while, a French producer jumps into the market. And for a while, this is one of them. If people don't jump on this, I don't get it. This is your weeknight wine or your... Robin, you said you'd bring this to a party yes. in a minute. Alex was talking about how the packaging actually keeps this wine fresh for months, but I was thinking, who wouldn't show up to a party with this box of wine? I know. Four you bottles. Just, you just put it on the edge of a table. Like, yeah. A pool party or boaters who can't bring glass on a boat or... Uh, campgrounds where they don't want glass for safety reasons. I mean, there's so or many. Or my house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really. The other I, thing, it's easy to carry. It doesn't look like four bottles of wine. I mean, you can tuck impossible. it underneath your yeah. arm. It's like a little magic show. <laughs> it's very really. deceptive. <laughs> <laughs> it's really terrific. I'm so excited about the potential with this because of the quality of this wine. It tastes exactly as we tasted it in the bottle. I just wanted to get your assurance, Alex, your personal I promise you, absolutely promise you that this is the exact same wine as in the glass bottle. And you can, you know, you can go into a retail store and you can pay 14 or 15 for, for the glass bottle, or you could spend 34 or 35 and spend the equivalent of, of 850. And you can do it side by side mm -hmm. and they're exactly the same wine. I love a good deal. I do too. And if you go online, we've got a picture of the box. We've got a kind of a hilarious picture of us <laughs> pouring this into a glass from a you know significant height um, <laughs> at, at the restaurant. And um, that's at foodschmooze.org. You'll see there what we say. Not every wine store is probably onto this yet, and so call ahead and read them the label, and then they'll be sure to bring it in. And we list the distributor right there at foodschmooze.org. Let's jump over to the restaurant experience, olives and oil. And we had a cocktail at this restaurant, and you'll see that picture too. You'll see all of our food. And it was so, it's called Notorious P.I.G. And mm -hmm. I, it is a play, there's a little pig, there's a play in this cocktail. On, just a little um, pig. <laughs> Notorious B.I.G., Ruth Bader Ginsburg. No, Notorious R.B.G., Ruth Bader Ginsburg, <laughs> yep. um, a woman we love on the Supreme Court. So they have made the most, was this the most delicious cocktail? Yeah. It's instant summer. The yeah. strawberries, the Prosecco yeah. in it. It it's is beautiful so pink color. house-made oh. strawberry-infused mm -hmm. vodka and, oh, as the base, and then many other things, a little Aperol. Aperol, right? Oh, and fabulous. And the pig, did, did you guys squeeze it? It yeah, had a little... Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was a really an actual little plastic pig <laughs> that comes yeah. on the edge of the glass. You'll yeah. see. You'll <laughs> see at foodschmooze.org. Yeah. But we had uh, pulpo, which was the grilled octopus. We had... You had a... Bolognese that was to die for. Really? Meatball. Oh, so good. I didn't taste that. Okay. And, and the pasta was homemade, so it's like delicious. Yeah, they make it every morning. And it was al dente, so it was not mushy. It really had like a nice texture to it, and the sauce was Love the my scallops, but delicious. you know what was the winner at the table? I would never have guessed the grilled sardines. Yeah. Yeah. It was if my you, first time. If you, and what'd you think, Robin? I... I'm now mad at myself for not having eaten sardines my whole life because it was so rich. Those were particularly good. They, yeah. You know, some, some places just do a great job with them, and Olives and Oil does that. Because I think we grew up, like, with cartoons where the cat has the sardines out of the garbage can <laughs> yeah. and all that's left are the bones or something. <laughs> so it has this, like, 
<laughs> Funny connotation. Or you say, don't we use those for bait? You know, yeah. I mean, it's just like, they're, they're so good. Doesn't it taste like just the best fish? I mean, the, if you can get over the name, you, the connotation behind it, sardines yeah. are just so briny and well, You know how we grew up with them delicious. in a can, and I do eat yeah. them that way? When you have them on the grill, like this yeah. hole on the grill, they Some spark. Some lemon they're phenomenal. and salt. Yeah. Really I phenomenal. had no idea what I was missing all this time. Oh. Th- that on a sandwich, just a baguette, you know, a piece of bread Can and I sardines. The John yeah, Brennan's, the, the owner's mm. mother, is <laughs> Sicilian. With the desserts? And she, did the des- she does the desserts for the yeah. restaurant. I have had enough panna cotta to last me a yeah. lifetime going to Italy so often. This was a lavender panna cotta with berries strewn around it and a, a, a dollop of whipped cream. And yes, uh. beautiful flowers on top. It was dazzling. It was. She it, is something. It was like creamy without being like gelatinous, right? It like it mm-hmm. had just rich flavor, and it wasn't you know that sometimes. I don't even like lavender. I mean, I, know, I, was just I don't like order crazy. a lavender dessert either, or a it, lavender drink it was because phenomenal. It's, it's so uh, can be overpowering sometimes. <laughs> yeah. well, it but... keeps the bugs away. That's why the French <laughs> grow it to keep the scorpions away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, anyway, just fabulous. And Alex, thank mm. you for bringing this wine. Of course. To find out more about this and it is what did we say 30 34 35 35 dollars for four bottles in one small i mean small cardboard box you think it, it's not possible yeah With a people little... really need to look at the picture on our site because if you are thinking about boxed wines from like the 90s that is not this yeah some some oh, serious no. wine drinkers are going to have to learn how to walk over to the box section of stores because they may have never gone there before and there are <laughs> yeah. a lot there are many many i check on them yeah. because i want us it's, to do what europe is doing and get boost growing. up the quality right yeah. and and get away from the industrial production uh in these box wines which really is not wholesome and not necessarily so great for the body this is a real wine and you know i was thinking some people that aren't big drinkers maybe who just want a glass every once in a while this is also a fun format for them because they can have a glass maybe once or twice a week It'll last them for a long, long time, so you won't be throwing away wine. So we're in the restaurant. We called ahead and said, would you allow us to do this? And they said, of course. So we're walking with our cardboard box of wine, and we're pouring it and taking pictures and having a grand old time. Then it's time to leave, so to come over to do this show. We pick up the box, and Alex says, feel this. There's still three bottles in here. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought that's not possible. (laughs) And it's true. Yeah. It I, goes, it goes, it goes. It's just, it's just an empty. It's like a religious miracle, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hose attached to the wall or something. <laughs> Aside from all of those other benefits, it's just delicious wine. It's I delicious love it. wine. Yeah. All right. Here's what we're going to do coming up in our next segment. We are going to talk about a book that is one of the most fascinating food books I have ever read, and it's about one single product, whether you use it in cooking or in cleaning, cleaning pots or stain removal. It is it's just a thing in nature that, well, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the Baking Soda Companion is the name of the book. I was floored by all the things that baking soda does. Who and knew? It's, who <laughs> in the world knew that this happened? Makes things smell good. I guess our ancestors They're knew. less bad. But, <laughs> all right. Uh, it's been around since, what, uh, Egyptian times, I think, baking wow. soda. Okay. So we're going to get to that uh, coming up in our next segment. We love the local. Please support your local food growers and food makers. For an on-demand podcast or copy of the show free, delivery of the food schmooze every week. And to find all of our wine discoveries and cocktails and food discoveries, go to foodschmooze.org, and we'll be right back.
I'm Faith Middleton. This is the Food Schmooze Party, offering the richness of life and coming to you in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New York. New York, including Westchester County, the East End of Long Island, the Hamptons, of course. The senior producer is Robin Doyen Aiken. And to hear the show on Connecticut Public Radio, it airs Thursdays at 3 and 9 and Saturdays at noon. Podcasts, our curated recommendations, are always online at foodschmooze.org. Alex Province is here, our senior contributor. And we are about to talk about, honestly, this is one of the most interesting books that I have read in a long time. It's about one inexpensive product and how many ways that you can use it while you're cooking, cleaning, uh, removing wine stains, pot stains, oh, and about a thousand other things. The book is called The Baking Soda Companion. And when I was done reading, I thought, what? This can't be true. So we want you to put this to the test. We're asking you now on Facebook, how do you use baking soda? You learned it from a relative. Maybe you read a book like this one. Maybe uh, you just figured it out for yourself. How are you using baking soda in either cooking or cleaning? And share that with us on Facebook. The site is Faith Middleton. Fuchmos on Facebook. We really want to get into this with you. And if you don't know anything about this, wait until you hear this conversation. The book, The Baking Soda Companion, these are natural recipes and remedies for health, beauty, and home. The author is Susie Scher. Welcome to the Fuchmos Party. Thanks for having me. Susie, what is baking soda? Sodium bicarbonate is a mineral. The short answer is that it's a ground up rock. But it's really, it's a mineral, it's a salt, actually, is what it is. And in fact, if you were to taste baking soda, it would taste salty to you. So it's a very uncomplicated product. There's nothing in it except for this mineral, Mm -hmm. this salt. So let me ask you, is there anything they do in the production of this? Uh, Plain salt can be produced in a way that is not so great for the body, not so body-friendly. Is there anything they do in the production of this that we should be careful of? Is there one kind of baking soda that's better than another? How does that work? No. Baking soda is pure and it's natural, and there's actually nothing scary about it at all. It's about as safe a product as you can get your hands on. You know, as we all know, we've all grown up using it in our refrigerators. You open the box and you think it eliminates odors. Does it? It does. It okay. really and truly does. But you don't want to use that box to, <laughs> as you, to, to, please, do, to you know. Please in, don't use that box to cook with. All don't right. use this box. Uh oh, everyone here, does, you here, know. <laughs> hey, not my, me, I know. Not me. <laughs> okay, so here is you've got food recipes in here, you've got all these home remedies with this stuff, and I cannot wait to get at this. And that's why I'm interested in our Facebook responses on this. Thank you for letting us put some of the recipes in. Number one, this recipe the fluffiest scrambled eggs ever using baking soda. How does that work? Baking soda is, the pH scale is a little bit alkaline, and eggs are just a little bit acidic. So if you think back to science class, when you would combine baking soda with vinegar. The volcano. Exactly, the volcano. So what happens when you add just a little bit of baking soda to eggs it has that a tiny bit of that chemical reaction, so you're getting bubbles, you're getting air in the eggs, and that adds lift and lightness in sort of a surprising but amazing way. And there is no evidence or research that you know of that says that putting even a little baking soda into the human body, into the stomach, the gastro tract, does anything to, I don't know what, kill off the microbiome, <laughs> you know, it be unfriendly to the community there? Or is there any problem health-wise? Not that I know of. With any product, you want to use common sense. So, you know, you're not going to be eating cups and cups of baking soda. Um, that would be really tough on the system. Okay. But a little bit is harmless and may even be helpful. Okay. So thank you for that recipe at foodschmooze.org. Then, of course, 
Robin and I went to another recipe that we thought was just so fantastic, and that is how to use just a touch of baking soda, thanks to you, to create dreamy, crispy, roasted potatoes. Oh. Isn't uh, that a cool one? Yeah. So you say Yukon Gold Potatoes. This is at the site, foochmoose.org. A little salt, just a touch of baking soda. You tell us the amounts, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a little teaspoon of pepper, toss it all together. And what happens? There are a couple of things that happen. For one, the baking soda breaks down the pectin in the potatoes. And also, because it's a salt, it draws the starch to the surface. So what is happening is you're getting creamy, fluffy potato on the inside and really crisp on the outside. Mm. Um, And that's because of what's happening chemically with the starch. Let me jump in and ask this health question, because a lot of people, thanks to their doctors, have gone on the DASH diet, which is a low-salt diet to help with a variety of issues regarding the heart and blood pressure. Because this is, quote, a salt, if you are on a DASH diet, do you have to be careful? I don't actually know the answer to that question. I thank Um, you for saying that so (laughs) honestly. Okay, so (laughs) we say ask your doctor. Exactly, consult with your doctor. So here's the third recipe. This is amazing to me, and I really want to understand this. You give us a recipe, and we put it on the site, homemade ramen noodle. This is a hack. You can take regular noodles, add baking soda, and turn them into ramen noodles. And if you're a ramen noodle freak, you will go, oh, my God, how do I do that? So tell me how this one works. So for one thing, when you think about the way that ramen noodles taste as opposed to regular spaghetti, there's definitely a a flavor component that baking soda adds, this sort of alkaline, a little bit intangible flavor. So that's one thing that's happening. The other thing is that something chemically goes on with the baking soda that changes the texture of the pasta. So instead of being soft and tender to the bite, it becomes more elastic and sort of springy, and that's one of the signature aspects of ramen noodles. So you can actually take regular spaghetti yes. and a little bit of baking soda, we give you the recipe, and some water, and mm-hmm. turn it into the same, this is why it's a hack, to turn it into the same texture and profile of ramen noodles. Yep. So very it's, cool. It's a, close imposter, I would say. So here's a recipe you have for a tummy tamer. It can happen that people go out and party too much or something goes on, who knows, and you have an acidic stomach. And some people will run to get various over-the-counter stuff. You saying that we can use baking soda and water to create a tummy tamer. Absolutely. If you were to look on the back packaging of a lot of over-the-counter antacids, you would find that the active ingredient in many of them is, in fact, baking soda. In the same way that it would balance sweetness and acid in a, in a dish that you're cooking, because it's alkaline, balances the acid in your stomach. Yeah, this I know that you have to follow the instructions perfectly because you want to use a very small amount of sodium bicarbonate because otherwise it'll produce copious amounts of gas in your intestines, which can actually be bad. So Yeah, it's, then you're uh, just trading one problem for another. Yeah, so, <laughs> and, and so read the back of the box very carefully when you yeah, use it. Yeah, exactly. Follow the recipe, and don't think more is better. No. You know, no. this is what we all do. <laughs> yeah, this be is like not Willy, like chocolate. <laughs> like Willy Wonka, you'll be floating up to the ceiling fan yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and no one wants that. <laughs> okay, um, so I have, uh, in my lifetime, I don't know about you folks, gone and bought fruit and vegetable wash, oh. and paid yeah. dearly for it. And so here I find out that you can make your own fruit and vegetable wash using a little white vinegar, your baking soda, a little a grapefruit seed extract, which is at most health food stores. There you go. And so why does it remove bad stuff from fruits and vegetables? Well, because it 
breaks down some of the waxes on the outside mm-hmm. of produce. A lot of produce is waxed, and that's not something that you really want to ingest. And the other reason is that it's just a little bit more abrasive, right? So it can get, it can peel away some of the the dirt that's a little bit harder to get at when you are just running fruits and vegetables underwater. Um, but the other thing that is great about baking soda is that it actually can be antibacterial. Mm. So some mm. of the icky germs that are on the outside of fruits and vegetables from other people handling it in the market, from Rolling around the floor. It. Mm. Um, you know, we all try to wash our hands and be clean, but you yeah. can't count on it. <laughs> yeah, so, so we would say um, with something like this, because we've had all these E. coli scares and all that, um, I, I wouldn't assume that anything we talk about on the show is going to automatically eliminate E. coli. or It would be irresponsible for us to suggest such a thing when we really don't know. But I hear you about this, Susie, that it can be very helpful in many ways. Now, having said that, let me just add in that in modern food production now in the, in the corporate world, the nasty juju, uh, the poisons, are sort of bred into the development of the fruit or the vegetable. Mm. And so you can't just take the skin off and think, now I'm safe. I thought so, and then scientists called me and said, we're it's so inside s- the fruit? It's inside, ejected during the development of the fruit. So it's on the inside as well as the outside. So all the more reason, if you can possibly afford it, to try to afford organic if you possibly can. It, sometimes I can't. They don't have it. Um, okay, so here was one I adored, Susie, which is how to make your own dishwashing powder. I buy dishwasher powder all the time and it's not cheap and you know I buy the one that I think is going to keep my glasses super clean (laughs) Um, and you have this recipe using baking soda how how does this go? I mentioned in the book that this was a uh, discovery that came about as a result of desperation I had people coming over to my house and I had run out of dishwasher detergent and I had a sink full of dirty dishes (laughs) and so I did a little research and found that a little drop of liquid dish soap and baking soda works incredibly well. It's an especially great dishwashing solution if you have hard water. You'll find amazingly that you end up with a lot fewer spots on your glasses. Hmm. The cool thing about baking soda is that because it's a salt, it's made up of a ton of tiny little crystals that are actually water-soluble. So I always joke that it's like Mary Poppins. It's firm but effective. So when you wet baking soda, the edges of the crystals begin to soften just a little bit. So it's a good scrub, but it won't scratch the surface of whatever you're cleaning. It's what makes it such a great cleaning product. So so here's my Lucy Ricardo moment. And this was really was an episode of the show, except it happened to me. I got it in my head one night that I could just, why was I buying this product? I could just put dishwashing detergent into oh, my dishwasher. And, <laughs> and so you're, you're going to see this recipe and you're going to be tempted to add more than what it says, which is just two drops of dish soap. Don't do what I did. Don't be enthusiastic. The bubbles and suds coming out from every you corner. You cannot believe it was pouring <laughs> out of the locked door all over the kitchen floor. It was like pouring out like it was unbelievable. So I certainly you just do that once. <laughs> um, so um, pay attention to that recipe. Uh, We've got only a minute to go, Susie. So let me quickly say there is a recipe in your book, The Baking Soda Companion, for how to make your own silver polish, how to clean enameled cast iron cookware. I have a lot of that. Yeah. How to get red wine stains Mm. out. We're trying to make this very food schmooze centric. There's something in here about a shower curtain cleaner or something. Um, How to clean the grill with baking soda and water. Uh, It's a good abrasive, which makes sense. And how to get rid of a lot of the odor in your compost bin. 
Uh, That can be really odorous. And how to use baking soda to sweeten your tomato plant. This is an old thing that people have done for a long, long time. The baking soda, by the way, goes back to, what is it, the Egyptians? Yeah, absolutely. Does anyone still brush your teeth with baking soda? Like my mom used to do well, that. Well, somebody it's good or not. made a commercial brand yeah. of toothpaste, the baking soda toothpaste. Yeah. But it's just fascinating my teeth are still here. to read this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fascinating book, Susie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pleasure to talk to you. The Baking Soda Companion: Natural Recipes and Remedies for Health, Beauty, and Home. There's a lot of beauty stuff in here that was really interesting to me. Okay. It's at our food site, foodschmooze.org. Special thanks to Alex Province in our New Haven studio. We're on Connecticut Public Radio Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at noon. Weekdays, listen for my 60-second food schmoozes and never eat more than you can lift. In New Haven, I'm Faith Middleton. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast on your schedule. And when you need a little more party in your life, we're here online at foodschmooze.org. And we hope you'll talk with us on Facebook. We're at Faith Middleton Foodschmooze.